Hi everyone and welcome back to my UE4 tutorial series on inventory systems and how to make them. So last time we left off we looked at how to make the widgets appear on the screen such as this. Um, now we're going to look at how we actually add stuff to our inventory. So this will probably be a two-parter so let's get started on the first part of this. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do today is going to fix a bug that we noticed in the, well, I noticed in the last episode. So if I go into my inventory systems uh, window, the bug, by the way, was that when you have the backpack open, hit the close button, you have to like, double click it to close it, which we don't want. To fix that, you go into your inventory window, go to the graph, and look for the on clicked event done for the close button. Now, the, what you don't want to do is use on clicked. Okay, the reason being is that when you click on something, uh, you're basically first of all you're setting the focus onto it. So by the time we clicked on it, we've set focus to the button, but time has passed where this is no longer registered. So if we change this to a on released instead, it'll work. So if we click on the button close on the left side here, and click on the on released button there. And hook that up like so. Click compile. And now when I've got it open, the button closes this first time. Okay, so that fixes that problem. So to make it work with adding stuff to inventory, um, we need to actually make it so we can actually see it in our inventory. So we're gonna go into our inventory slot and make it so it can work with the item thumbnail that we set up last time. So the item thumbnail, we can go into our graph editor and we're going to make the construct event event construct and this construct event happens as soon as this slot's made so when it's created we are going to get the item thumbnail and set its brush because if we look in the item thumbnail the brush section is what we want to change so appearance brush image okay so go into your graph drag out item thumbnail choose get and from there, we're going to set brush from texture and hook that up to construct. The texture we're going to assign it to is going to come from our slot contents. So the slot contents, you drag out, choose get, and then right click on the slot contents and do split. And inside here, we have the item structure and the quantity of the item. Right click on the item structure and choose split again. And now you have access to all the details we set up in the very first episode about the item. And one of those is the thumbnail. So drag that onto the thumbnail section on the brush and click compile. And we're done here. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the item quantity text to change to show how many I've just picked up. So on the text here where we had the underscore ph placeholder text, we're going to create a binding. So click on the bind drop down and choose create binding. A binding basically keeps makes it interactive. So it is going to change and dynamically change based on variables inside the game. So the variable we want to use is the quantity variable inside the slot contents. So drag the slot contents out, choose get, and then split them by right clicking split. And here you have the quantity simply just drag and drop it onto the return value and it will spawn this node here which converts the integer into a text format. Click compile and we're done there too. And that will do for the inventory slot. That will now update and show the contents that it is holding. So the very first thing we're going to do is make the system so we can uh, when we interact with the items here they are picked up by the inventory system so that is all handled on the inventory component so let's go back to our inventory component and in here we're going to create a new function we've already got one called toggle inventory we're going to make a new one by clicking on the plus icon in the functions table and this is going to be called add to inventory before we get cracking on this though we need one more function and that function is going to be called prepare inventory and what prepare inventory is going to do prepare inventory is going to set up the 
uh, array to have the correct number of slots because it doesn't have any slots at the moment it's just empty so we need to make sure it's got a load of empty slots so that we can find and fill with stuff so what you can do is go to inventory get and drag that out and type out resize and you want to resize it to an integer which will be the same as the number of slots so drag number of slots onto that pin and that's it that's all we're going to do at least for now on prepare inventory click compile and go back to your event graph and on begin play we're going to set up uh, set that prepare inventory function like so so as soon as the game begins and the inventory component is there it will prepare itself by building the array to the correct size so now we've done that we can go into our add to inventory so what we're going to do in this episode is just focus on non-stackable items and that is going to be achieved by adding first of all some inputs and outputs to our add to inventory so the input we want to add here we click on the plus symbol and we're going to name it contents or content to add again you can name it whatever you like it doesn't really matter too much um, just try and keep it as plain as uh, and easy to follow as possible and the type is going to be a slot structure its output is going to be a boolean called success so we know whether or not we were successful in adding an item to the inventory if we were we'll do stuff so the add to inventory um, we're going to check first of all whether or not the content we are adding is stackable because we do different things based on if it's stackable if it is stackable we're going to look for existing stacks and add it to that if it isn't stackable we're going to simply just create a new stack which is what we're focusing on today so right click on your content add and choose split struct pin and then right click again on add item in structure this will now give you all the details about the item we are adding including whether or not it is stackable from there drag out into a branch so false will be if it isn't stackable true if it is stackable so we are going to create one more function called create stack so click on the plus icon create stack is your new function and this stack uh, create stack function needs one input which would be the content to add oh it's doing a silly thing there we go content to add um, and we're going to call it and it's the type of slot structure and that's all we're going to do for that and we're going to uh, click compile so we're going to add the inventory and from there we're going to create stack by dragging it onto our event graph so false will go into create stack so it makes sense really if it isn't stackable we're going to create a new whole new stack and the content we're going to add to it is going to come from here now because we've already split it we can't just simply drag up uh, lines to it however if you just drag from here the content to add and choose get content to add that will get us the variable the parameter that came in with this function as so so now we've got the create stack event so the create event the uh, function sorry the create stacker function is going to do two things it's going to first of all find an empty space and then fill it with this content so let's find that empty space so drag on the inventory array choose get and then from there you want to find the value that's empty so type in find this will find an item inside the array um, that we want to specify here so drag this out and choose make slot structure and we'll leave this blank okay don't do anything into it so it's basically an empty slot and this will spit out the first index it finds that is empty 
So we're going to set it uh, with this content. So from the inventory array, we can drag out and time type in set array element. And this is how you add stuff to an array or insert stuff um, to certain indexes indices. And the index is from this find and the item is the content to add. And that would do there. We can click compile and close that. Now the create stack will just take this content to add and make a whole uh, find an empty space and fill it with that empty space. If it isn't empty, we'll worry about that later. We'll do all that fact checking later. Um, this comes out negative, uh, so it doesn't find anything. Um, we can write about that later. Okay, so let's now get it so it works with uh, adding stuff to it. So to call this function, we go into our item parent, so the item base item class. And here's our current event interact, and you see it's just the interact event and destroy actor. We want to put something in between this that adds it to the inventory. So to do that, uh, we need to get the inventory component that is interacting with this item. So for this, we need to edit this interact interface. So let's go into that interact interface. I think you can do it by double clicking. Let's have a look. Yep. So double click on it and you'll get the interact interface um, options. And here's our interact that we set up in the first episode. And in here, we want to add one input. And I'm going to call it the interactor. And it's going to be an actor type variable. And then click compile. So now we've got this interactor variable. So we're going to pass through whatever is interacting with this item, be it the player character or another character or another player, whatever it may be. And we're going to call that interactor's inventory component. So from interactor, drag out and type in get component by class. And the class component we want is the inventory component. Okay, so this is going to get the inventory component of this interactor. So if it's successful, we're going to get from here and we're going to uh, call the add to inventory function. And we hook that up like so. So the content to add, yeah, close that. the content to add um, to the inventory is this item. So we're going to drag out the content to add here and click make slot structure. And the item we want is this one. So drag on the item structure variable. That we made, again, we made in the first episode. And the quantity we're going to add. In this case, we're just going to add one. And from the success, if it is successful, we want to destroy the actor. If it isn't, we don't want to destroy the actor. So that's done by a simple branch. So drag that out. Branch. And we hook that up to there, to there. Click compile, and we're almost done. The next bit is to give this uh, interact uh, interactor um, variable a value, and that is handled on the player character. So let's go into our first person character, and the interact. You can, uh, function you can see here is now asking for an interactor and that you just drag out and type in self because it is itself and click compile close your first person character and I think that's it I believe so anyway um, oh yes let's go and actually set up our green herb so let's go into our inventory system the items and the item herb so I've already set up a lot of this. So here I've just typed in the name of it, the green herb. Is stackable I've turned off because we're only making the non-stackable version at the moment. So turn that off, otherwise it won't work. The thumbnail, I've just got a thumbnail off the internet and chucked it on there. Um, description, I've left that blank for now. Uh, is consumable, it doesn't matter too much right at the moment. 
uh, max stack size likewise and durability likewise and the class I've given it is an item herb class okay so with that set up as such um, we should now test the game and open up the inventory it's blank and if I go and interact with the herb not working why is it not working what have I messed up what have I messed up do, do, do. inventory components um, add to inventory this stack is false that is correct um, con create stack success oh we've got to tick the success box there we go click compile and go back to play there we go and there you go there's our item and if I go into with another one because it's not stackable it should make another slot and there you go you can see the one there's a quantity working just fine now the beauty of this system is, is we can easily make new items so for example I'm going to my item here and I can right click on item create child blueprint of this class call it item rock and in here I can just set all of its stuff up so static mesh will be uh, rock that do and let's scale it down a bit there you go uh, the, then we're going to click on the item rock self component up here give it its details so here its name is rock it's stackable we're going to turn off thumbnail let's just import another thumbnail icon oh I've got one here oh no uh there sorry icons import stone icon like so and uh back to my item rock i can choose the thumbnail for that uh that was a mistake because i've got loads of <laughs> loads of damn things herb icon uh stone icon there you go not rock um class item rock so when i make a new item i just set these variables up and that's it um i can just drag that into the world like so hit play interact with it and it appears on the screen like so and there you go so that's going to add stuff to the inventory system next episode we're going to go into how to make it stackable so how to make stacks of items add to each other um it's quite involved so uh, bear with us as we go through it in the next episode if you have any questions comments or feedback please leave them below in the comments and please give this video a like share and subscribe for all future content from my channel um, i'm going to do loads more in ue4 um, and i'm happy to take suggestions from uh, people okay so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.